Hey everyone, a complex back with another video and today today we are going to talk about what is the most confusing topic to hit anthems a season of skulls and that is how to do the entirety of the free play event. So right now if you go into free play there is a series of 3 free play events that you can do and then after that it unlocks a conjunction and we saw the conjunctions in uh, the original cataclysm and they went to a kind of horde mode area that had 3 tiers and you had to break crystal stuff like that but this time with the season of skulls it's slightly different and it's slightly confusing and today I am going to deep dive into how to do each of the free play events and then the most important one how to do that tier one event that is causing everyone so much trouble so let's just dive on into it there are three events we're going to talk about the first one which is um, Arcanist research you're going to assist them uh, these can be done in any order um, but I'm just going to talk about this one first you want to tag in to start the event once the timer goes down and then you are going to have to find four echoes the first time and then this kind of repeats the cycle three times so the first time is four then five then six so this time find four tag them in like you normally would and then enemies are going to appear and you are going to murderize them in as quick a fashion as possible because this whole thing is timed so you have 45 minutes to do all three events before you head into the conjunction which you can do lickety split no problem um so after you killed these guys then the area where you tagged in will show you two different symbols and there are pads around the area so you'll see these two symbols here and you'll see these pads pop up with different symbols so you just want to touch on the two symbols that correspond with the two symbols that it is showing you and then you are going to have to reset the device find more echoes kill more bad guys and rinse and repeat until the event is done at the end of the event a titan does normally spawn so you're gonna have to kill that as the last baddie that you're gonna have to kill and then a chest of loot pops up and that is yours to claim and then we're gonna move on to the next event this one is called cleanse a fire shrine cave this event is always in the exact same location the other two events uh, will spawn randomly in different places on the map but this one you will always find it actually reminds me a lot of the me3 mp escort the drone or the torch event that was in dai mp so there is a variety of things that this kind of harkens to which i love it feels like classic old school bioware um and i'm obsessed with this event and so you're gonna pick up the torch and then you're gonna carry it to a bunch of little um shrine areas so you're gonna place it in and it will light this fire now if you go outside of the fire or you're not the torch carrier, you will destabilize just like you do in the cataclysm when you are outside of the safety bubble. So that is something to be aware of. Now, if you are the person carrying the torch, you can't run, you can't strafe, you can jump, but that's about it. Uh, you can shoot your gun and all that good stuff so you can defend yourself but just know you are grounded, which I actually really like the way that that feels. I think it's an interesting mechanic um, that we haven't seen in Anthem before, and I am a little obsessed with that as well. Now, once you place the torch in the shrine, you will see that it regains all of its strength, and then as you're walking through the areas um, and it's lighting the way, it is losing strength. So, and that is something to note. So you want to make sure that you are getting to the right locations as quickly as possible. Now, these locations do not change. So once you learn the layout of this area, it goes really quickly. And then after you get through a series of these smaller shrines, you will come across a much bigger shrine. And that is something that you're going to need to protect. And it'll go green just like the normal um, protect a certain area. And it's just basically a horde mode where everything kind of comes at you. And then um, you kill everything. And once it is fully green and good to go, you just pick it up. And then you're going to rinse and repeat for a different area. Now, there are three big shrines in total that you need to go to, and when you get to the final shrine, things are a little different. Once you place the torch within that final shrine, Faye will mention that you are actually missing some skulls and it's not acting like the rest because the fire isn't big enough, and it will point you to a few different areas where you can pick up, up to, there are five skulls to pick up, and then you just have to bring them back to this big shrine, and once all five are in place, it acts like a normal shrine, and then you get the big boss back battle for it, which is a really cool looking Ursic, if I do say so myself. Um, so just know when you get to that final one, you do have to pick up the um, the five bone shrines and you can't fly when you are carrying them um, just like any other um, like relic pickup or anything like that. 
Now, because this event does take place in an entirely different zone than what um, you're in for the free play, it will, at the end of it, have a countdown timer and it will just pull you out just like it does with the conjunction. And now we are on to the next event. For this event, to start it, you're going to pick up a canister that is on the ground. And then once you pick it up, you're going to place it in the fire. And then you will protect the area until it goes green entirely, just like a normal um, protect the zone mission. Um... And then once that is complete, the fire status will actually need more fuel um, instead of just protecting the zone. So what will happen is big Colossus enemies are going to pop in and then you are going to kill them and then they will drop you more fuel and then you'll just pick it up and put it back into the um, bonfire, just similar to how you started the event. One thing to note is that when it goes to a red slash orange bar, you're going to want to try to keep at least one person in the zone only because when the um, enemies walk in or there's nobody protecting the area, the fire status actually decays quicker instead of um, the fire like staying lit at a better rate and not needing quite as much fuel. If you have a lot of enemies that come in or nobody's protecting it, it'll actually decay a lot faster. And you can note that by the bar turning a, um, a deeper and like red or red color if that makes sense oh when the fire is like at a quote-unquote good pace and where you want it it's normally an orange color so that's something to pay attention to just so then that way you can keep your fire lit the entire time and you do have to protect this area for five minutes while you're picking up the fuel it's also worth noting that those big bad colossus dudes that drop the fuel they don't actually come in all of that often um i think normally we have like two to three spawn so it is definitely worth keeping an eye on that fire status making sure no enemies are hot Hopping in to the middle and also that you have somebody there so in that way the fire doesn't decay too rapidly because if the fire goes out well then you failed the event and you must start over but now now we're gonna head over to the conjunction which I know is why most of you guys are here so let's get right on into it so this area looks just like it did before with the cataclysm but it is a anomaly and when the timer goes away after you travel to it you can hop in just like we did before with the cataclysm and the other conjunction when you get in here you were actually in a scar fortress in the sky I am obsessed it's beautiful the first thing you're gonna want to do is uh, get as many of these turrets down as possible you do have a a little bit before the gate closes if you're there um, right when it opens so just get rid of all of the turrets it'll make your life a lot easier now the one thing I do want to let you know is that when you do the first event um, actually the first two events because there are three tiers so the f tier one and tier two both have you picking up things and you can't fly with them just like with relics so if you pick something up and you miss a landing or anything like that because you jump from way up top to down low and you fall through the world you are going to be kicked out of the event so just make sure you are being as cautious as possible when um, you're doing the first two tiers but let's chat about the tier one event so what you're going to be doing is picking up these fuel tanks that are available up on all of these high platforms and you're going to be bringing them to that center circle with the charging cells and you're going to place the fuel tanks in the charging cells and just note it acts like a relic so you can't actually fly when you have them equipped and what you want to do is get enough of these fuel tanks in so the charging cell goes all the way full and turns green and that means that you completed the event now one of the reasons people are failing the event so often is because when you have an enemy walk into that circle it lessens the charge on the charging cell so it's decaying very similar to the bonfire um, in one of the free play events so every time you have an enemy walk in, you lose charge and you only have a limited number of fuel tanks in order to fill up that bar all the way. So if you have either too many enemies in throughout the entire course of the time, you're just never going to have enough fuel tanks to fill up that bar all the way so the event will fail. Or you only have one or two fuel tanks left and you have too many enemies in the middle and the bar is almost full. But by the time you put those fuel tanks in, it's just you've already lost too much even at that last minute. So you're going to want to make sure you're paying attention to the fact that your bar needs to stay either green or orange. You don't want it red. Red means that there is an enemy in the middle and you need to clear them out as quickly as possible. And when you're down to one or two fuel tanks left, you really want to make sure you're not putting a fuel tank in until you've cleared out the enemies from the circle so then that way you don't have any decay when putting that charge in 
one thing to note is that even if you put all the fuel tanks in, if that decay had been too much um, with letting too many enemies in or anything like that, then you will fail the event. And generally, you will not know that you failed the event until you put in all the fuel tanks. So sometimes that can get it, make it a little confusing where you're like, I put all the fuel tanks in. Why did I fail it? It's because you would let the bar decay too much. And with all the fuel tanks that you had, it was never going to fill up all the way. And so for the tier two event, you're going to see that you have these um, little things that you can pick up. You're going to want to pick it up. Once again, it's just like a relic and you can't fly with it. You can only run and jump with it. And you're going to want to follow um, this kind of pipe tubing line all the way up to the tippity top. Remember what I said earlier, if you fall um, through the world, you get kicked out of the event. So just make sure that when you're jumping across some of these platforms, you are being extra careful and you're going to want to follow this up all the way to the tippity top. And when you get there, you'll notice that there is a spot for you to put the device that you picked up. You're going to place the cell there. And then on the other side of where we are now, you'll see like the little hand symbol. There's a lever to trigger. So if you're in a coordinated group, you're just going to want to make sure you have somebody up there already. So then that way, when the time comes, it is super easy. It is a pretty far flight. So you're better off going from the platform with the balloon instead of from the bottom all the way up because you might not make it um, with like the heating, overheating and stuff like that. And then the last event, the tier three is generally going to be a boss fight. This time around, it is an Ascari. I don't know if they're going to be changing out the bosses, but from the challenges, it does look like we're going to get a different one per week. So this week, as of recording it, it is the Ascari to kill. And you will note that there is flight suppression when you're killing them. So just make sure by the time the um, a tier three event starts that you are in the appropriate area, just in case so you don't like fall through the world or anything like that. But y'all, that's pretty much it. You've officially completed the event now. Hopefully this guide was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments down below or find me on Twitch. I do stream Anthem at least once a week and I am always happy to help and answer questions when and where I can. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your night and or day depending on where you are in the world. And I will catch you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>